Are you? Yeah, we are a little late. Um, a little bit of a technical difficulty that we were having. Um, but I wanted to nonetheless get before you and talk to you about financial literacy for kids. Um, so if you saw a little earlier when we tried to go live, you saw that I had like a little emoji going on. Something fun for kids. Um, since we're going to be talking about financial literacy for kids for the entire week of July or something around, right, kids and teens and even your college students. So um, hopefully tonight sets the tone, right? It sets the um, stage for how our talks are going to go throughout the month. So I want you all to get a pad and a piece of paper, take notes. Um, I can't see like who is logging on. So um, please make sure that you um, are putting comments um, in the comment section below. If you have questions, we will be sure to revisit those and address those before the end of the live. Um, and there's going to be some questions that I'm going to ask throughout the live as well just to get some feedback on some more things um, maybe that you can share with us, maybe that I didn't cover um, as I'm going through tonight's live. So let's jump right in it, right? Um, it's about how to talk to your kids about finances, right? Like that's what this live is about. And so the number one way to do that is just do it, right? Hopefully, you all have a healthy and an open um, line of communication with your child. And so talking about finances is not something that is going to be um, hard to do, right? If you already are accustomed to talking to your kids about a gambit of things, right? You talk to them about what go what's going on in school. Um, so it's just another area, another opportunity for you to talk to your kid um, and teach them what you have learned and hopefully learn what they know. Um, so there are some prerequisites that I would say you should do before you start this whole conversation about finances. One, it's imperative to kind of gauge where your child is. So you should ask them questions about what they already know, okay? Um, and how you do that is you just ask the question. You just say, hey, tell me what you know about the value of money, right? Or you may ask them, you know, um, what do you think $100 can buy? It's good to kind of gauge what your child understands about money and the purpose of money um, the ways they can use money, um, why money is required, right? Like those are the conversations that you want to start having with your child. So it's important that you do that like early on. I feel like the early on you have these conversations, the better off um, both you and your child will be. Um, but definitely for your child. And then the second thing is like after you've gauged like kind of where they are, in their financial literacy journey or their money journey, right? Um, then the next thing that you wanna do is you wanna create a space um, where they're open to ask questions, right? And that you're willing to give answers, answers that are helpful and age appropriate, okay? So that's the key is to make sure that the conversation is age appropriate. You don't wanna lose them. I mean, like I have a 10 year old, Right. And I can't have a conversation with my 10 year old about 401ks and mutual funds like I would totally lose her. She would have no idea what I was talking about um, and I would like just lose her um, attention and she would no longer be interested in talking about finances. So that is something that is important. Right. After you learn what they know, you want to make sure that you are. Um, making it age appropriate, making the conversation age appropriate. So that's very important. That's key. Okay. Um, and then what I would say is I know that with kids, they learn through reputation, repetition, sorry, <laughs> repetition, repetition. And they also learn through like action through doing things. And so you want to make experiences like going to the grocery store, 
right? You want to make experiences like going to the bank. You want to make those um, routine things that you do that we take for granted. You want to make those learning opportunities for your child. And so that's a great time. Like when you're going to a grocery store, when I go to the grocery store, it's an event. Okay, so I have a coupon binder. So I cut my coupons on Sunday, put them all in binders in certain areas. I go through the grocery store, um, like the ads, so I can see who has what on sale. And I like to like double my savings. So I'll use the buy one, get one sales, and then I'll use coupons on top of that. So I plan out my trip and I'm not just buying stuff that I don't need. Like I'm buying stuff that we need for the home. Um, but I like to have my family like see that, that I want them to see. Like mom plans out her grocery store visit. Um, mom clips coupons to save extra money. So it's all of those things are experiences, right? Routine things that we do that we take for granted that we can use as a teaching tool for our kids. So we can teach them about things like saving and budgeting, right? It's all a part of financial literacy. Um, another way that you can teach your child is through games. Um, I know growing up, I played Monopoly all the time and I hated it as a child because my mom was not the mom that took it easy on us, right? Like she was like, the real world won't take it easy on you and I'm not taking it easy on you either. And so when we would play Monopoly, um, you know, she would play just like she would be playing with an adult. And so we had to learn real quick, you know, sink or swim, right? We had to learn real quick the rules of the game um, and develop strategies so that we could win, right? And we didn't want her winning all the time. Uh, and so sometimes that mm -hmm. meant like we would team up, right? You, you form these alliances, if you will, in Monopoly um, so that you can um, win the game. And so um, that is a cool way to teach kids about finances. When you're thinking about Monopoly, you're thinking about moving around that board, it's all about acquiring property, right? It's all about, um, you know, making sure that you have enough money so you can buy investment property and then watching the board to make sure you're collecting what people owe you for the investment property, right? Um, and so you want to absolutely use that opportunity to teach your kids. That's a teaching tool. Um, when I was growing up, we had another game called, um, what's it called? I think it's called Payday. And what you would do is you would move around the board. And as you moved around the board, there were like things that came up like um, Payday. You would land on a Payday and you would get your paycheck. Um, then you would land on another space and you had to pay mortgage. So you had to pay that out. Um, and so um, there was there was opportunities for you to learn through play, okay? Um, so those are some tools that you can use, right? You can use experiences and you can also use games, right? In order to teach your kids about money. So do we have any questions, any comments so far? Um, let's see, I don't see any just yet, but um, if we do, I will be sure to address them like after the live. Again, we're having some technical difficulties, so I'm used to seeing stuff on the screen. So I can't really see you guys' uh, questions or comments as they come in, but um, we're definitely going to take... Okay, so Casey says, I remember my mother allowed my sister when she was a teenager to calculate her checkbook. That's a good one, Casey. Um, So... Calculate like having a check register is absolutely something um, that I would suggest you teach your child at a young age. Most adults <laughs> don't keep a check register, especially with um, all the apps and things that we have. I think we've gotten a way of writing things down on pieces of paper, um, but keeping a check register is absolutely vital. Like it's key to know at all times what you have in the bank. Um, so that way you can create this a budget, right? You can make sure that you're staying um, or living below your means or you're not overspending, you're not overextending yourself. So 
That's a good point, Casey. I mean, absolutely. Show your kids how to, uh, what a check register looks like, how to balance their checking account. It's absolutely a great tool that you can use. Um, another tool that you can use is our books, right? So there are some books that we're going to share during the live, or I should say after the live, um, that are kid appropriate, right? And so some are for younger kids and then some will be for older kids. But it talks about things anywhere from um, earning money, investing, even talks about like having your own business. Um, I read an article the other day. There was a 14 year old boy who was actually writing a book so that he can earn passive income. Get this now so that he can buy his first investment property. And I was like, that little baby made me proud. Like, that's the type of stuff that I want, I aspire for my kids to do, right? And that's the type of stuff that I'm sure you aspire for your kids to do. Like, you want them to have the advantages that you did not have. And it was mainly, it wasn't because, um, you know, there was lack of opportunity, but it's just because we didn't know. Because we weren't having conversations like this with our parents, more than likely, right? And so I stand by... Um, the, the last kind of teaching tool is, um, experience. Experience sometimes is the best teacher. And so you have to be open and honest with your kids. Talk about your wins and definitely talk about your losses. Um, when you do that, like it, it paints a picture for them that like nobody is perfect. Um, this money thing is, it's a journey, right? Financial literacy is a journey. But you absolutely want to try to expose them to the mistakes that you made so that they don't make the same mistakes. There are two types of people in the world, okay? There are people that learn from their mistakes and then there are people that learn from the mistakes of others. I kind of dabble in both. But <laughs> there you have it. And so when you're talking to your kids about finances, you want to, you know, tell them, hey, these are the mistakes I made. So I don't want you to make that same mistake. Uh, one thing that I told my son when he was going off to college, because I do have a son that's old enough to be in college, I says, hey, do what your mom did. Go to a community college to get your core credits, right? And then go to the college that you desire maybe to get all of your focus credits, okay? I said, because that community college is going to save you some money, right? You don't want to be spent paying that $40,000 a year, um, just for just for your uh, core credits, where you can go to a community college and maybe pay about ten thousand for the year. So me personally, that's something that like that was a really quick, um, easy win, like a no brainer to me, really, um, for me to tell my son. And so that experience that I had, right, of being exposed to community college and doing it a cheaper way. Um, I passed that on to him, you see? So now he's already like one leg up on some of his peers who did not have that same experience or didn't take that same advantage. And so that's just an example, right, of how our experiences, our mistakes, our wins, we can use those to help our kids and to teach them about financial literacy, okay? Um, and so lastly, I just want to say, um, make sure that in any conversation you're having with your kids about finances, please make sure that you're open and honest. If you don't know the answer, okay, the worst that you can do is kind of like wing it, right? Don't wing it. Don't wing it. Because <laughs> more than likely, um, your kid is going to take your word, right, as bond. And so you want to make sure that when you are giving them guidance, that the guidance is, is sound guidance and it's the right information, okay? So if you don't know, learn. You can pick up a book. You can read a book, right? You can um, subscribe to finance magazines, right? Um, visit our website. We have a, a newsletter that we send out that talks about finances, all right? So subscribe to our newsletter. Um, we're going to have more information rolling out on our website so that you can visit that and learn more about financial literacy. Um, these books, we're going to put a list of the books in the comments below, um, but we're also on the website in the near future. We're going to have like a book corner. 
so that you can see some of the books that I read about finances, right? Um, and then some books that I, you know, support for your kids as well. And so um, definitely don't just wing it. Please don't just wing it. Um, there is a saying, um, right, about teaching a man to fish. So it, if you give a man a fish, he eats for a day. But if you teach a man to fish, he can eat for a lifetime. And so that's what you're doing with your kid, right? You're setting them up, especially when you don't wing it, when you do your research and you know what you're talking about. You're setting them up to win for a lifetime. You're setting them up to have a life that you dreamed of. Okay, and it's possible. The thing about finances is the earlier you learn about it, right, the better off it works for you. Okay. Um, and and so throughout the month, we're gonna we're gonna dive into these finances around kids, right? So we might be talking about a gambit of things um that involve your kids or your teens or college students, because we definitely um want to make you all uh you know more financially literate um and and i want you to share any books with me we're going to be sharing a list of books but please share the books that you have read um that you thought were helpful um for learning about financial literacy especially if they are around um children if they're children-based books please 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 share those with us um, we would love to be able to repost that in our um, readers corner as well um, and like I said, please visit the website and subscribe to the newsletter. Um, that is one of the fastest ways to get on the roll of, um, of becoming more financially literate. So we want to make sure that you are visiting there, getting all this good information um, and, and just staying abreast on these th type of things. Right. Um, if you knew better, you do better. Right. So. As a saying that um, I totally uh, agree with. And so I want to make sure that um, you all are staying informed. So I'm going to go to comments. All right. So we do have some comments. Y'all, we got to do it the old-fashioned way. I told y'all. Okay. So Casey says, this is great. Allowing my child to um, caught my change I received from the store. Okay. Not sure I understand that one, Casey. Um, I remember. Okay. Yep. I read that one about your mother. Um, Charles says another great topic for tonight. Thank you, Charles. Um, Maya says that's a good point. Age appropriate conversations. That's right, Maya. You don't want to lose them. Um, and then Maya said, I wish I would have thought of that when I was younger. It's okay, Maya. Uh, we have time and we still have breath in our body. So that means we still have time to grow and learn. I'm still learning every day. And so that's why I said it's important just to be open and honest with your child never wing it always make sure you're giving them some good sound information okay um so that is it five finance family i hope you enjoy it enjoyed it i'm sorry i hope that you found some of these tools some of these talking points to be helpful in introducing your child to financial literacy um, again we've already posted some books to help encourage that conversation even more right at an age appropriate level so please take advantage of those resources that we've shared with you. Um, but until next time, Five Finance family, um, make sure that oh, you also check out the website. Forgot to tell you, make sure, again, just want to reiterate that you go to the website, subscribe to the newsletter so you can keep getting um, information like this. I always almost forgot, but I want to make sure that I push that more because I truly want you all to get that information that's out there so we can all win together, right? So until next time, Five Finance family, have a wonderful and blessed Tuesday evening. Thank you for joining us. See ya.